What do I do on number six of this practice midterm? Could we? We can't combine because they're not exactly like terms. Like this is a, a, to the, a to the third B, this is a, a B to the third. They're not like terms. They want us to factor. Factors are a reverse distributive property. What's the first type of factoring you should always attempt? What's the first thing you should always try in factoring? Anybody? Pulling out the GCF, guys, the greatest common factor. In other words, is there something in common in the first one and the second one? Yeah, there's definitely the, the multiple of 5. So you could pull out a 5. But could you pull out anything else? So let me maybe leave more space here. Could you pull out anything else besides a 5? A. And is there anything else? Like, yeah, there's A's right here. So you could at least pull out an A and a B. There you go. So 5AB is the GCF. It's not difficult. It's just maybe you haven't practiced in a while. So what would be left over on the inside? Uh, okay, there's going to be a 3. 3A three three squared. Three squared. Is that it? Yeah. A squared. Okay, and then? Minus 7 B squared. Perfect. And now, of course, you're supposed to look at the inside and see this binomial. Is there anything to do with that binomial? Could you factor out anything in common? No, you can't. It's, it's not a difference of two squares. It's like, that's it. You're done. That's all you can do. Moving on. So that's your answer, guys, right there. So on this problem, we're going to pretend that it's a quadratic trinomial, right? We're going to pretend that it's like a 8x squared minus 15x minus 2. Uh, how would we tackle that? It would factor by grouping. So step one would be to go um, a times c. You guys remember that? And that would give you negative 16. And then you have to think of the multiples of negative 16 that combine together to give you the middle value, negative 15. Yeah? That would be negative 1 times 16. Actually, negative 16 times positive 1. Right? That'll give you negative 15. Step 3 is to rewrite your middle value, negative 15x, with these two numbers, okay? Now, there is uh, one thing to keep in mind. This is really not an x squared. It's really an x to the, f or n to the fourth. This is really not an x. This is really a n squared, okay? So um, when I rewrite this thing, let's uh, jump back to this, actually. You're going to have 8 n to the fourth, you're going to have minus 16n squared plus 1n squared minus 2 at the very end. Yes. Sorry, that might have confused some of us that I changed it to an x squared and an x. That was only to get you started. Like, how would you tackle this? You would factor by grouping. A lot of people get confused with the end of the fourth. So I just pretended that this was an x squared and pretended that this was an x. But now that we actually are splitting this to be negative 15x, instead of negative 15x, let's write it as negative 16x plus 1x. But instead of that, let's jump back to n squared since this is what we need our answer to be. So let's factor by grouping. In the first group, what could I pull out? What's in common in the first group? There's definitely an 8 and an n squared that you could pull out of the first group. What's going to be left over in there? Anybody? N squared minus 2. There you go. And now in the second group, is there anything to pull out? No. So let's just pull out a 1 just for the sake of pulling something out because we're factoring by grouping. Pull out a positive 1. That's not going to change anything. It's still going to be an n squared minus 2. Now if you look at both groups, there's that binomial that's in red, n squared minus 2 in both of them. So we could actually 
pull the n squared minus 2, pull it out of the whole thing. So let me put the n squared minus 2 right here. And on the inside of my exaggerated parentheses, I'll have the a n squared left over plus 1 left over. So, of course, you want to write it, or on your multiple choice, it's going to not look like that. It's going to look like regular sized. Why did I put an M? It's going to be N squared minus 2 times 8N squared plus 1. That is your answer right there. Remember, factoring is reverse distributed property. So, is there anything that's in common that you could pull out? The GCF, always start with the GCF. Could you pull out anything in all four terms? No. There's no X's in all four terms. There's no Y's in all four terms. There's not even the multiple of 2. 57 can't be divided by 2. So, you can't pull out a GCF from all of them, but... There's other factoring methods, which in this case, factoring by grouping might help us. Might. We need to see what happens. So let's look at the first two terms. Look at the second two terms. Think of them as separate groups. And is there anything you could pull out of the first two terms? Y. This guy right here. You could pull out a Y for sure. Is there anything else that we could pull out? Let's, let's think about the number 57 and 76. Now, we are able to use calculators on a test. So let's get some calculators and let's uh, start multiplying numbers and see, or see if 57 is divisible by a number and 76 is divisible by a number. So you have a calculator, let's just, I mean, if I were to think 76, what's uh, 76 divided by 2? 76 divided by, what's half of 76? It's 38, right? Now, 38 obviously is not going to go into 57. So maybe, hopefully, you could divide by 3. How about 76 divided by 3? No. No? Did you try it on calculators? Yeah, it doesn't go. 25.3. Okay, that didn't work. Um, let's go with uh, 57 then. 57 divided by 2 is not going to work. How about 57 divided by 3? Yeah, it does work. 57 divided by 3 is what? 19. 19. Okay, so let's focus in on the number 19. Because we know 19 times 3 is 57. Is 19 times something 76? 19 times 4, so there you go. We're going to pull out the GCF, the multiple of 19. Now, this is a really weird number to pull out, right? Normally, we're pulling out like 7 or, or 3 or 5. Right here, we're pulling out 19, and we're also pulling out a Y. So ignore this A, ignore this B. Okay, so we're going to have uh, 19 Y on the outside, and on the inside, we're going to have what left over? We're going to have 3 X minus what? 4. So let's look at the second group. The second group is over here, the negative 30x plus 40. What could we pull out of negative 30x plus 40? A negative 10. And that's great that we're saying negative 10, because if we pull out a negative 10, what's going to be left over? Positive 3x minus 4. And as you can see, if you take a step back and look, there's both binomials 3x minus 4 here and 3x minus 4 there. So we're going to pull out what's in common in the first group and the second group. We're going to take this, pull it out, take this one, pull it out also. So let me get a little more space here. So again, I want to take the 3x minus 4 and pull it out from both groups at the same time. So I'm going to have my 3x minus 4 out here. And then on the inside of these exaggerated parentheses, I'm going to have what left over? 19y minus 10. And of course, you're supposed to see if you could factor out anything else, but there's nothing else to factor. So this is your answer. Um, of course, the multiple choice answers are going to have it uh, with nice parentheses, normal sized, 3x minus 4, parentheses, 19y minus 10. Cool. And that's your answer for number 8. I mean... It's not exactly the same, but very similar to that on the midterm this Thursday. We're going to factor number 9 also. Anybody remember what we need to do to factor number 9? We need a formula. Oh, yeah. 
What's that formula called? What is this sign? A negative, a subtraction. It's, it's the difference, right? The difference of two cubes. Hopefully, we could use the difference of two cubes formula. So let's write down the difference of two cubes formula to start off. So a cubed minus b cubed, this is not part of the formula, but this is what it needs to look like before you actually use the formula. So uh, once you know your a and once you know your b, then you're going to have a binomial times a trinomial. And the binomial will be exactly the same a minus b, but without the cubes. And over here on the trinomial, you're going to have a squared, you're going to have a b in the middle, you're going to have b squared at the end, and of course, if you're beginning binomial sign in the middle was a minus, then this one has to be a plus. Okay? And a squared is always positive and b squared is always positive in this formula. <clears throat> so, what we need to do is first write it like this, a cubed minus b cubed. In other words, I need to go back to my original and write it as something cubed minus something cubed to identify a and b. So what belongs in here, if I cube it, will give me 125x cubed? 5x, right? 5x times 5x times 5x will give you the 125x cubed. How about here? What belongs in here? So with the calculator, we found out that 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. So that would be 6y right in there. So we have identified the a value being 5x and the b value being 6y. Once we know the a and b, now we could plug it into our formula as a binomial times a trinomial. So the binomial will be uh, 5x minus 6y. Why did I write it so big? Let me change that. And the trinomial, you have to plug in your a and b into here here, here, and here, right? But of course, use parentheses to help you out. So instead of a squared, we're going to go parentheses. What belongs in the a spot? 5x. And that is squared. And then plus a times b. I'll put a uh, parentheses times parentheses, which is going to be a 5x times 6y. 5x times 6y. And then the last one is going to be plus b squared plus parentheses squared and the B is 6Y, 6Y. Okay, so let's work out that trinomial. The binomial is already done, nothing to do, 5X minus 6Y. The trinomial is going to become 25X squared plus 30XY plus 36Y squared. And that's our final factored form for that question, which is number nine.